Business Calculus, Topic 4, Homework Problems Number 5, 6, and 28. We want to find the exact location of all the relative um, um, all the relative and maximum extremes of this function. Now this function is positive, the leading coefficient is positive, and it's raised to the fourth power, which is even. That means that both ends will go upward, which means that we won't have an absolute max. Maybe some relative um, mins and absolute mins and uh, relative maxes, but no absolute maxes. So let's take a derivative of the function g. We'll get 16 t to the third power minus 32 t to the second power plus 8. Oh, should be a square there. So this will be a 16 t. My fault. Should be square. We'll set all that equal to zero and solve for t. Uh, we can take a greatest common factor of t of 16t out, leaving behind t squared minus 2t plus 1. All that equals 0. This trinomial factors into two binomials of t minus 1 times t minus 1. And all of this can be compressed into 16t times t minus 1 all squared equals 0. So when we solve for t, we'll have t equals 0 for this one, this term, and this term will have t equals 1. Now, because this came, this solution here came from a multiplicity 2, this will not be regarded as a possible relative max or min. Okay, so that drops out as a candidate. So we only have t equals 0. And let's put 0 into the function, the original function g of 0, and 0 to the 4th power is 0, 0 to the 3rd power is 0, and 0 squared is 0, so this will be a 0. So 0, 0 will be our, um, that's going to be a minimum, because we know this function only goes as, there's no max here, but there will be a low point here. I think when we graph this, this will actually give you a shape that looks like this. And there is the um, point at zero there, whereas one is that false sense that you have an absolute maximum. In. So it's zero, zero. So we have a local min. And this will also be an absolute min as well. Okay. Okay, same thing with this one right here. Uh, we want to find the exact location. Let's say we want to get derivative of this, and we're going to get um, derivative of t prime. 4 times 4 is 16, times 5 is 20, 21, t to the third power. Okay, minus, okay, we got 288 times 3. And we'll get 8, 6, 4, t to the second power. And we'll double all this. We'll get 8, 6, 4, and t. And the derivative of 18 is 0. So we'll, and then we'll set the entire derivative equal to 0. OK. Now, let's solve this by taking out the greatest common factor. Let's see if 216 goes evenly into uh, 864. So 8. 6, 4 divided by 2, 16. Hey, it goes evenly. Four times. So 2, 16 to the, um, sorry, t leaves behind t squared minus 4t plus 4t, sorry, 4 equals 0. This trinomial factors into two binomials of t minus 2 and t minus 2. So we have 216t times t minus 2 to the second power, all that equals 0. And when you solve this, we'll get t equals 0. When you solve this side, we get t equals 2. But again, multiplicity 2 implies that this will not be a max or a min. So our only candidate is t equals 0. So when we put t equals 0 into the original function, all these values become 0 except for the constant 18. So we're left with 18. 
And again, I know that the ends of this are going upward because we have even, even and a positive um, coefficient. And I see here at zero, uh, we have a dip. It's really not zero, but and then at two, we have a flat point. So zero, 18 is going to be a relative min and also an absolute oops an absolute min as well now number 28 number 28 we're looking for all the same elements the max and min but now we're looking on a graph <clears throat> So, we're going to assume that um, each mark here is going to be 4 for A. So, uh, up to this point right here, that's 4. Up to that point right there, that's 8. And for B, let's say 1. So, here is 1 there. That'll be 2. That'll be 3. And this will be minus 1. This will be minus 2. Okay, now um, for the let's say let's do an absolute min. For the absolute min, the lowest we can go is right about here. Yeah, these two spots here. And starting from back here, that absolute min right there. Um, that's down to, I'm sorry, x is back at negative 3, and it's down negative 4. So that's our absolute min. Okay, keep moving, um, keep moving to the right. This is next spot. That's an absolute max. And the height of, I'm uh, sorry, the x part of that is going to be 1, and the height of that is going to be about 8. And then keep moving to the right. The next point is right here. That's going to be a um, absolute min as well because it's on the same level. So absolute min occurs at x is 3. And the y part looks like it's negative 4. Okay. 